yeah, it was just a lot of stuff that I felt so uh, divorced from, right? Like realizing that my friend was having this experience and also while they were having the experience, they were saying things related to their spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, created a lot of fear in me, right? Of like, yeah. I, I really don't know to this day, right? Like what was going on for them and how they needed help. Um, and I don't blame them, but it's still a very painful memory that, you know, impacts me to this day and is part of the reason why I'm disabled. Um, so I think like right after that incident, I had like a whole year, two years almost, where I was just like, go, go, go. I'm going to distract myself, right? <laughs> I'm going to go to school. I'm going to work three jobs. I'm going to do all the clubs. But I would come home and I'd be crying. Like I would just be in my bed at night, just so depressed and really didn't have anyone to talk to about this experience because again it was just it's just something that a lot of people haven't experienced yeah. and i had the experience that a lot of people were very curious about what happened to me um and would be really like, entitled to knowing and of course that really made me avoid it more right because it mm -hmm. was like i had a lot of visible scars that people would comment on and so for me it was like I just need space to breathe, right? So it, I, I feel like both my own, where I was in my life, and then everyone's external questions and assumptions and you know curiosities really pushed me further and further away from spirituality and myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't until you know I started. Um, well, I met my current partner, Izzy, and they were someone who's very spiritual, um, and I started going to therapy specifically for trauma. So I had been to therapy years before, but it was often the same experience where I would just be talking for 45 minutes and they wouldn't interrupt me at all. They wouldn't stop. And at the end they'd be like, okay, and how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just spent 45 minutes telling you how I felt, but, um, and I was really grateful to start therapy at the Bay Area Trauma Recovery Center. So if anyone is in the East Bay, they're located in Berkeley, I highly recommend. They are a teaching clinic, but um, they do sliding scale therapy. And that was one of the only ways I could afford to keep going. And really having access to that, which is a huge privilege in itself. And finally being like, hey, I have to address this. Because what I found is that it was impacting my relationships, my partners. Um, at the time, you know, because I would get triggered so easily um, by just a lot of different things. And, or I would, you know, be lashing out because I felt unsafe. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like a part of our healing process as like humans, right, is like reflecting a lot back on like different things and trying to figure out like how you can do things differently. That's like my main goal in life. Yeah. Like, how can I improve? Um, and, in that note, I came across this quote by Octavia Butler, I think sometime in college and after that incident too, that has resonated with me and stayed with me to this day. And it's all that you touch, you change. Mm. All that you change changes you. Wow. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. The one quote. <laughs> um, yeah. And even though I don't resonate with like God, like I don't call, I don't, yeah, God just isn't a part of my life right now, but he, uh -huh. I don't have any issues with him being a part of other people's lives, um, as long as you're not being hateful towards queer and trans people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, yeah, like spirituality for me is healing myself and coming back to myself and learning how to trust myself and my intuition. Because I've also had the experience that I've been through a lot of hard, heavy things, but there were several times in which I felt my intuition, like telling me something was wrong, but my desire to help people and my desire to be a good friend, a blank, right? All, again, all the roles that like, mm -hmm. I, yes, I knowingly chose them and it, it fulfilled me, but a lot of it was external pressure. So mm -hmm. I found that I was constantly burning out and constantly getting hurt by people but partially because I made myself available, right? It's like I would go into relationships and friendships and what have you, just being overly like, how can I help you? What can I do for you? And then 
what I've learned is that when you start out a relationship like that, people come to expect it, right? Mm. And oftentimes we're not able to reciprocate what you need in return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that all with us as well too. So it sounded like um, you said said you were like trusting yourself or kind of connecting with that intuition. Mm -hmm. I, it was, I think we're, I was one of the recent interviews we we're talking about was saying that intuition is that kind of spirit, that spiritual connection. Would you call that your spirituality or your connection with spirit or how would you define that? How would I define my intuition? Or yeah, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, my intuition is my highest self and that may not resonate with everyone, but you know, for me, the highest self is like your ideal. I mean, ideals aren't, aren't good to have, but it's like the version of yourself that you want to be, right? Your mm -hmm. best self. Yeah. And what I've learned in my trauma therapy, and I mean, this is for everyone, right? Even if you haven't been through a lot of trauma, everyone gets emotionally triggered sometimes, right? A trigger is just something that reminds you of a, of a bad emotion that you once felt, right? And yes, there are like trauma triggers that are very different, right? Like triggering a flashback, but it comes down to, are you able to pause and observe yourself and look at your reactions and then turn them into responses, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's something I learned in therapy. Shout out to my first therapist, Erica. Um, we're no longer working together, but she really taught me that managing trauma and PTSD and just managing emotions, it's not about controlling your emotions. We can't control our emotions, right? Mm -hmm. But what we can control is our reaction to those emotions. And if we pause and reflect and are able to like calm down all the physiological things that are going on in your body, because I know sometimes you're like, oh, I'm so triggered, I need to say something, or I need to do something, or I need to, you know, cope and do this X, Y, Z. It's really hard and it takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I also kind of fell more into meditation as a spiritual practice. And I'll be the first to say I'm not good at meditating. Um, I have a brain that is constantly on overdrive and I just start thinking like, why am I still thinking? Why am I still thinking? Yeah.